Hey y'all, I've been working on a self-balancing robot that uses a PID controller to balance, and, and then I trained a neural network to replicate that PID controller, um, and I thought it was a pretty cool project to work on, so I thought I'd make a little video about it. So first things first, I went online and looked at some videos and blog posts made by other people who had made their own PID controller self-balancing robots, uh, just to get an idea of what components I'd need. So after looking at a few of these projects, it became clear that these robots really only need a handful of parts two motors with two wheels for the robot to drive on, a microcontroller that kind of operates as the brain of the robot, and then a motor controller which interfaces between the motors and the microcontroller, and then you also need an IMU, which is a sensor that measures acceleration and rotational velocity. You'll also need a battery to power the motors as a 5 volt USB connection that you normally use to power an Arduino, uh, or other microcontrollers is just inadequate to run motors. I'll put links for all these parts in the description, but note that there are a lot of options for each that will work just fine. Uh, I happened to pick these parts because they're really easy to implement and also were fairly cheap. I just wanted to make a quick PSA to say that your everyday 9 volt battery is not a good choice here, um, especially because I was initially using those, uh, but they made tuning PID gains a nightmare since the battery performance started dropping almost immediately due to the high current that motors need. Uh, so basically I was tuning a controller for a system that kept changing, <laughs> which was not a fun experience, would not recommend it. Once I had all my components, I sketched out a design for the robot's body and 3D printed the parts. I put all of this together, uh, held together with hot glue of course, and then got to work tuning the PID gains. What you can see here is my first revision of the robot, which I eventually replaced with this second revision that was able to recover from much larger angles. This is due to the second design having a lower and more centered center of mass, both of which allow for the second revision to recover from an angle with much less torque from the motors than the first revision needed. You could definitely also make the robot body by hand out of something like wood, plastic, acrylic, etc. Uh, just something that's fairly strong and fairly lightweight. Uh, just be mindful to make sure the wheels rotate about the same axis and that the robot's mass is symmetric about this axis. Both those things don't need to be exact, but try to get close to that. Uh, it'll make your robot operate a lot better. So once you built your robot, you're going to want to calibrate your IMU because almost always when you get these out of the box, each of the values is just offset by some constant, and so you just have to figure out what that constant is and correct for it. Um, so this is really easy to do if the robot's not moving because you'd expect the three gyroscope values to all read out zero um, because there's no angular velocity. And then two of the accelerometer bit readings you'd also expect to be zero, but one of them you'd expect to be plus or minus 9.81 uh, because of gravity. And so if you look on the IMU chip, it'll have a little depiction of where those three axes are pointing so you can figure out which one should be 9.81 and if it should be positive or negative. So once you've done this, you just have to write some code to estimate the angle of the robot given the IMU readings, and then use this angle estimate as the error term in a PID controller. Um, and so for these two steps, there are a lot of good resources online. I'll put some in the description, so I'm not really going to go over these. Um, but at a high level, tuning the PID gains, how I did that was I pretty much set them all to zero. I increased P until it like almost balanced fine on its own, but still isn't great. Um, and then increased D to try to improve this balancing performance out a little bit. Um, and then I just put I equal to P um, and then kind of just like adjusted the three by I, which isn't a great way to do it, but it worked all right. So now that the robot can balance on its own, it's time to train a neural network to replicate the PID controller. To generate training data, I simply printed out the IMU readings my PID controller used and the command it generated at each time step. Note that I included the I error term since it is important to the controller and would be completely lost if only IMU data was passed, and I didn't really think the robot would be able to balance without it. I saw one group online instead fed in the controller output from the last time step as an input, and that could in theory replace passing in the I error term like this. Unfortunately, it is not easy to save data from the Arduino IDE serial monitor, but it is easy to do so through other serial monitors like PuTTY. All you need to know is the serial line your Arduino is on, which can easily be found through the Arduino IDE's menus as shown on screen, and the baud rate or speed uh, data is being sent at, uh, and this should be written in the setup function of your code as shown below. Once you've downloaded PuTTY, you just want to make sure that you switch to a serial port and add in the serial line and baud rate uh, where they go, and then switch over to the logging tab just to make sure that you're saving your data. So at this point, you're ready to start collecting training data, so all you need to do is plug the robot into the computer, open up the serial port in PuTTY, and let it run for 5 or 10 minutes. Um, one thing, though, is I would make a point to poke it a lot while it's running, uh, because if you don't, it's going to pretty much just be a right around balance the entire time, and so you're not going to have any training data from edge cases like this or like that, uh, and that'll just mean the neural network can't recover from as wide of a range of angles. So once I got all of my training data, I wrote a Python script that processes all of it and then trains a neural network with it. So since the system we're replicating is fairly simple, it didn't. the network doesn't need to be that complicated. Um, it has four input neurons, one output neuron, and three hidden layers of four neurons, although honestly I think you could have one hidden layer, the extra hidden layers didn't add all that much. 
I did find uh, my training accuracy jumped up a little bit when I added one really wide layer of like 50 neurons. Um, but the problem that introduced was that there wasn't enough space on the Arduino to like store all of those uh, synapse weights because like a four by four, you're gonna have 16 synapse weights, but if you have a 50 and a four, you're getting 200. Um, so that was an issue I ran into there. When I was training this network, I found that I got around like 40-ish percent training accuracy, which like not great, but it's okay. I think what really gave me trouble was in estimating the angle from the IMU readings, there's an arc tangent function that I, I just think it struggled to replicate. I would also be mindful not to use an activation function uh, that just wipes out negative values like ReLU because the PID output sometimes needs to be negative. So if you're just like wiping all negative values at every neuron, then it's just going to really struggle to replicate those values. Um, using something like parametric ReLU or leaky ReLU that lets negative values through to some degree worked a lot better. Once you've trained the network, it's actually pretty easy to put it back on the Arduino since we'll just be doing forward propagation, which is just matrix multiplication. To do this, I used the matrix math Arduino library to store my synapse weights and matrices and then multiply them by neuron values. Here you can see how I stored my weights and matrices. And here you can see me multiplying them by neuron values. Don't forget to include an activation function wherever you had it while training the network. And that's it. I might make the robot completely self-contained or iterate on the neural network design, in which case I'll make another video in the future. Uh, but that's all for now. Thanks for watching.